In this video, we will implement a passkey authentication into our Next.js application. Here is the demo of it. When I click this input, I prompted to select my Gmail, as you can see, and I can use just my finger to log in like this. Beautiful. And here is my session. You don't have to have a Mac device to have that feature and you can add this feature in just like 10 minutes. It's really simple and it also provides more security than the other authentication methods. Big companies started to use this authentication method so that I wanted to learn how we can implement. Google actually does this, you see. I can log into my Gmail account just using my fingerprint. It's great. If you don't have the fingerprint reader, you can scan your face. If you don't have that face scanner, you can use your screen lock password or other password you define. It will match your device and you will be able to use that password easily to log in the application. Let's implement this feature in just 10 minutes. Let's get started. First of all, I will go to Alt.js documentation. Since we are going to implement pass keys, I will go to providers and I will find the pass key from the list. I want to warn you that it's, it's an experimental feature and it's not yet recommended for production use. So if you are going to use it, please consider this. In this tutorial, we will use Drizzle. So that's why we will use this one. I will go to Drizzle docs here. And one thing we need to be careful about is that we need to have the minimum version 5.0 beta 17. Before that, we need to set up an Alt.js into our application. So I will go to this link and follow this document. First of all, we need to install Drizzle ORM and Drizzle Kit. Those are the packages that Drizzle team gives. And this is an adapter that Alt.js provides. Let's paste it into our terminal. I will open a new terminal and paste it. Okay, they both installed successfully. Let's go back to document and they expect us to have this environment variable. I will create a .env file and paste it. This key is out drizzle URL by default, but we can change it to anything we want. But if we change it, we need to configure next out to have the key that we have defined in our env file. But I will leave it as it is so that I don't change the default config. Okay, that's great. We need to make some configuration, so let's do it. First one is creating a schema. So schemas are there and this should be enough for us because this includes authenticators table as well where we need it if we want to add a passkey into our app. So I will copy this one and go here and I will create a new folder just to make everything more organized and structured. I will create a schema TS. Let me make this terminal smaller. Perfect. And paste it. Okay. Few things. We have some warnings. Probably it's because we didn't set up next out and Postgres just yet. So let's install Postgres first. Great. It's done. And next we want to install next out. But remember that we need to install the beta version of it. So I will paste it like this so that we will install the beta version. If you install without specifying the version, it will install the last table version of the next out. Okay, we still have some issues. So what I'll do is remove that node modules and package lock JSON and install the dependencies again. Hopefully the error will gone. I believe this error happens because since we are installed the Drizzle ORM first and it creates a package lock JSON using the older version of next out adapters. So as you can see, the error is gone. Now we can continue to step two, install a supported database driver. We have already installed Postgres, so we can skip this. Create a Drizzle config file. Okay, I will create a Drizzle config TS in my root directory and go back and for the Drizzle config file, I will click to this link where it will bring us to Drizzle ORM documentation. And I will just copy this example and paste it. One thing we need to do is our schema 
patch is different. So it's not in source, but it's in lib. Another thing I will add is DB credentials where I can pass a URL like this. And here I can just say process env drizzle URL and have this exclamation point to say that this environment variable is exist so that we don't get uh, the TypeScript uh, warning. So that's great. We can go to next step generate the initial migration. Okay, we can generate initial migration, but we don't have the database yet, right? And also this connection string is still a constant. And what I like to do with this schemas is that I want to separate the logic of database client and the schemas we are creating. That's why I will create a db.ts inside lib folder and copy this part. So copy this part and paste it into here. And I will also grab the result and paste it. Everything seems fine. For the type safety, the result object, as you can see, takes a client, but it also takes a config object that we can pass inside this object. It can get a logger and schema. We will pass our schema that we have defined here. We want to pass all the tables we have defined. We can import all the things like this, import star symbol as schema from schema TS, and we can pass it like this. Great, we have a warning and import pad can only end with a TS extension. I think that should work if you get rid of the TS extension. Okay, that's fine. And we can also shorten this one like this. And if I hover on DB, we can see that it has the type of schema. But if I get rid of this, you can see that it doesn't have type safety. So I think that's important. One thing I will do is get rid of this constant and put env string like this. But we don't have the database just yet. I will create a local PostgreSQL container in this tutorial. But you can use some cloud provider if you want, like Neon, Railway, or other PostgreSQL uh, cloud providers. I will copy this script and paste it into my terminal like this. And I will change the container name, but you don't have to. And my container is created. And this is the connection string so that you don't have to like manually type. You can get it from the readme. And I will put it into here like this. Great. Now I can do a drizzle generate to generate. Sorry, it should be drizzle kits generate. And we have generated migration. Then I will do drizzle kit push and changes are applied. As you can see, if we take a look at the tables, we have generated account authenticator session user verification token. That's great. Now we can continue to next step. OK, we have generated. This command is changed in the newest version. And OK, we have done it. Great. And we need to set up the adapter, as you can see. So let's copy this one and go back to our Next.js app. And I will create an out.ts inside the root directory, but you can put it into lib, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. This adapter requires a database, and we will get it from the db.ts, and everything works. Go back to documentation. We don't need that. We will use the default schema. And OK, for Drizzle or M adapter documentation, it's done. So let's go back to pass key and check what we need to do. So first, install peer dependencies. Let's copy this one. So the dependency with the browser is only required for custom sign-in pages. But in this tutorial, we will use the default page of next out. So it's, it's enough to install the server only like this. Go back to documentation and database setup. So we have already set up our database so we can skip this part and it says update RGS configuration. Yes, this is the thing we need to make. This two line of code we need to add into our object and, and it's here. Great. And we will import pass key from next out provider pass key. So let's make this P capital, but it doesn't matter. And this is this is also done. Last thing we need to do is create an API folder inside app directory and create an another folder with three dots and next out. 
so that next out will take the control of some of the routes for example sign in sign out etc and handle those incoming requests internally what we will do is import handlers from the out and if we take a look at inside handlers you see this function only returns a get and post request that takes a next request as a parameter and return a response so what we can do is we can get get and post and we can actually export them so it should work and everything is set up now our app is ready so let's check before that let's go to the page the default page and print out session we have we can call out like this but it returns a promise you see it's a promise of session so that's why we need to wait for it to resolve and i need to make this component async so it's a server side component we get the session great so let's log it in here json stringify session now we get an error in the console it says please define a secret i will go to my env file and i will say out secret secret key and the error is gone of course again you can define anything you want but then you need to go to ts and pass your secret key like this your secret key if that makes sense but since we are using the default one the next out will pick up automatically so let's take a look at our application localhost and our session is now and i will go to api out sign in and that's a good start sign in with passkey and i can enter my gmail here like this and sign in passkey and you see since i'm using a mac device they prompt me to enter put my finger into this uh, fingerprint reader and once i do that my key will be saved into my mac you see it's this is my email and if i take a look at the details i can see it's it's created today and the pass key so that's that's great if you take a look at the session we we actually have a session and our session token is there user id is there let's take a look at the database refresh tables user here we go i have an email and id perfect my email verified image and name is empty which is fine because we didn't ask for it and authenticator is there as well so i don't have a deep knowledge how this work internally but as you can see we have a public key and probably my mac has the secret key where they look for if that keys are matching and if those are matching and provider account id is matching they allow us to log in but i don't want to give a false information you can see that i can log in using my icloud keychain from now on if you are not using mac or if you don't have a device that doesn't have fingerprint reader you try to log in to this with a phone that has face reader it will ask you to scan your face if you don't have that one as well or if you just don't prefer it you can use your screen lock the the password that you enter when you open your laptop so that's also another option and if you are using a, a device that is not mac it will probably store your password in your microsoft account or google google also stores a pass key it's up to people but the issue i want to mention is that i can enter anything i want in here and once i do that i will be logged in right so you see so i highly recommend you to have a flow that to confirm the email that user sign up so maybe you have a protected route and you can check the email verified field if it's null you just don't show and you can show something like you need to verify your email first click here to verify your email exactly this kind of stuff you need to send an email uh, probably a token or a code that will expire in a short time of period then if user enter that code you you will make this field true and you will allow that user to see your app and use your app which make more sense to me okay this was ur i hope you learned something new i hope this video was helpful to you let me know what you think and how we can improve those videos thank you so much see you in the next videos take care bye bye